Let's get started in half frog pose. So we're going to lay down on our bellies and you can either create a pillow for your forehead or you can put your arms in goalpost arms and put one cheek down towards the mat. No matter which one, as long as you put the other one next time. And slowly start bending that right knee and sliding it up the floor towards the right elbow. We're gonna close our eyes here and just take a few moments to relax into this pose. If you'd like to set an intention for your practice, I invite you to do that now. If you'd like to dedicate your practice to someone, you're welcome to do that now as well. Just as you breathe, feel your hip flexor opening here and your hips loosen. And then slowly start to straighten that right leg, bringing it back behind you. And then you're going to bend the left knee, sliding it up, up the floor towards the left elbow. If you had one cheek to the mat, go ahead and turn the other cheek at this time. Once again, taking a few breaths, just breathing, feeling your hip open. Slowly begin to straighten that left leg, pulling it back behind you. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders, pressing up through your hands. You're going to press yourself back into child's pose, just sitting down on your heels. Take a breath here, stretching your fingertips far out in front of you. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, draw yourself up through tabletop pose and all the way to cat pose. Tilting your pelvis forward, pulling your belly button into your spine, arching your back as much as you can, chin into chest. And as you inhale, let the belly hang. Uh, open the, raise the chest, open the throat to cow. And sit back on your heels to child's pose. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, draw yourself up through tabletop all the way to cat pose once again. Really over-exaggerating the arching of the back. Inhale into cow. And sit back on your heels to child's pose. And go ahead and flow like this a few more times with your own breath. As fast or as slow as feels good to your body. Feeling free to pause in any movements, but really, really make your body feel good.
And go ahead and the next time you come to child's pose, we'll hold for a moment. Stretching the fingertips far out in front of you. Take an inhale as you exhale, draw yourself up to tabletop. Take a moment to bring your wrists below your shoulders, your knees below your hips. Belly button is pulled into your spine, back is long and flat. Sweep that right arm up to the sky, coming in for a little twist. And then we're gonna thread the needle, bringing the right arm underneath the left, coming onto the right side of the face. Coming onto the right shoulder. You're welcome to leave your left hand where it is. You can draw your left arm out in front of you, or you can bring your left arm behind your back, whatever feels good to you. Where your left hand is, bring it back underneath your shoulder. Press into that left hand to lift your upper body, sweeping the right arm up to the sky, and then bring the right hand back down underneath the right shoulder. Sweep the left arm up to the sky for a little twist, and then dive the left arm underneath the body, coming on to the left side of your face and the left shoulder, leaving your right hand where it is, you're drawing your right arm up in front of you or bringing the right arm behind the back. The arm is behind the back. You can even grab onto the thigh to sort of twist your body a little more. We'll bring that right hand back underneath the right shoulder, pressing into the right hand, sweeping the left arm up to the sky, and then placing the left hand down on the or back on the mat. Keeping our knees stacked below the hips, we're going to start walking our hands out in front of us, coming into puppy dog pose. So walk your hands out as far as you can, start melting your heart down towards the earth either bringing your chin or your forehead down towards the ground, but keeping those hips stacked above the knees. Should feel like a mini downward facing dog pose. Really feel your, your heart melting towards the earth. And then pressing the hands into the mat, press your forearms into the mat and slowly lift your upper body up first and then lower your lower body, lowering your pelvis down to the mat, coming into Sphinx Pose. Pressing into the hands and the forearms. The forearms are parallel like we're making the number 11. Roll the shoulders down the back. Press into the hands to lift your upper body more. Take a look over your right shoulder, back at your heels. Head back to center. Take a look over your left shoulder, back at your heels. Head back to center. Pressing into the hands, pressing into the forearms, tuck the toes, and slowly we're gonna lift our upper body up off the mat, coming into a forearm plank pose. Pulling that belly button into your spine, making sure your back is long and flat all the way from the crown of your head to your tailbone. So you don't want your hips raised and you don't want to let your hips sag. Just keep, keep a long straight line. If this is too difficult for you, you're welcome to drop the knees. You can always drop the knees for a moment and then come back up or drop the knees and keep them dropped the entire time. Either way. You want to make sure you're protecting your lower back here, so you do whichever version works for you. Pulling that belly button into spine, keeping your core nice and tight. And then slowly, we're going to lower our right hip down towards the mat. Come back to center and lower our left hip. Back to center 
and just keep going from side to side, lowering the hip, coming through forearm plank, and then lowering the opposite hip, making sure we're keeping that belly button pulled into our spine, keeping our core nice and tight, protecting our lower back by keeping our abs engaged. Once again, you're welcome to do this on your knees if it's too difficult to do on your toes, or you can drop to your knees for a moment and then raise back up. We're gonna come back to center and we're gonna press into our hands, press into our forearms, and begin lifting our hips, walking your, hip, uh, your feet forward slightly, coming into dolphin pose. So pressing into the hands, pressing into the forearms, press that chest back towards your thighs. And then slowly press into the right hand and lift the right forearm. Press into the left hand and lift the left forearm, coming into full downward facing dog. Spreading the fingertips wide, pressing into the hands, pressing that chest back towards the thighs. Just letting your head hang, letting your body relax. You're welcome to pedal the feet a little back and forth. Sway the hips from side to side if that feels good. I want you to begin straightening the right leg. Bend the left knee as much as you want. Straighten the right leg and lower the right heel down towards the mat as close as you can so you feel a stretch in that right calf. Bend both knees and then straighten the left leg as you keep the right knee bent. Pressing that left heel down towards the mat, feeling the stretch in the left calf. Ahead and bend both knees, pressing your chest back towards your thighs. Roll up on the toes, arching your back like a cat, and then roll forward into plank, bringing your shoulders directly above your wrists. Spike your hips up high, coming back into downward facing dog. Roll forward onto the toes, arch your back, and bring your body forward, bringing your eyes. Uh, Shoulders directly above your wrists, and then lift your hips high. We're gonna go ahead and roll through this a few more times. It's almost like a cat downward facing dog flow, just to open your body up. Going as fast or as slow as feels good to you. You're welcome to hold the plank a little longer if you wanna get more core work in. or maybe holding the cat arch, if that feels good to you. Just moving through, we're gonna um, pause in downward facing dog. We're gonna kick that right leg up high to the sky, cross the right leg behind the left, so our pinky toes are close to each other, and we're gonna start walking our hands back towards our feet. Coming all the way back. Um, bend your knees as much as you need to and slowly we're gonna roll up vertebrae by vertebrae, coming up to a standing position. Rolling the shoulders down the back, head coming up last. Inhale, arms reach up to the sky. The right hand is gonna grab the left wrist and pull it to the right. So you feel a nice side stretch, stretching out long through those left fingertips all the way down the left side of your body. Inhale, reach up. Now the left hand grabs the right wrist, and pulls it to the left. Inhale, reach up. As you exhale, we're gonna let our eyes walk up the wall and across the ceiling, coming into a back bend, cactusing those arms, squeezing the shoulder blades together. And inhale, reach back up. Exhale, swan dive down with a flat back. And walk your hands out. We're gonna be walking our hands all the way until our shoulders are directly above our wrist for plank pose. Then we're gonna kick that right leg up high to the sky as we lift our hips. Go ahead and replace the right foot down. Lift the left leg up high. Cross the left behind the right so our pinky toes are close together and slowly start walking your hands back towards the back of your mat. 
And once again, we're going to slowly roll ourselves up vertebrae by vertebrae, coming to a standing position. Shoulders rolling down the back, head coming up last. Inhale, arms reach up to the sky. The left hand grabs the right wrist and pulls it over to the left for another side stretch. Inhale, back up to center, and then the right hand grabs the left wrist and pulls it to the right. Inhale, up to center, taking that cactus back bend. Inhale, reach. Exhale, swan dive down with a flat back. Begin walking your hands out until your wrists are below your shoulders for plank. Kick that left leg up high as you lift the hips, and then go ahead and plant the left foot back down on the mat. Slowly looking forward, we're going to tiptoe our feet up towards the top of the mat. Coming into forward fold. Go ahead and let your hands hang, or you can grab your elbows. And we're just going to let gravity pull our upper body down and bend your knees as much as you need to. You're welcome to sway from side to side a little bit with the rag doll. Slowly release your hands to the mat. Place your hands on your hips. Lift your elbows, lift your chest, lift your chin, coming up with a flat back. Inhale, arms reach up, and exhale your hands to prayer. We're going to step our feet out wide about the width of our mat. Inhale, reach up. And as you exhale, uh, clasp your hands behind your back. Inhale, knuckles down towards the floor for a little back bend. And as you exhale, dive forward, bringing the knuckles up above your head like you're trying to touch them to the ground in front of you. And feel how if you try and press your palms in towards each other, it'll really draw your shoulders back. Make up for all the hunching we do over computer screens and phones and things like that all day. Let your head hang here. Slowly draw yourself back up into a standing position. Inhale, arms reach, and as you exhale, Inhale, sit back into a chair, lowering your hips, keeping that belly button pulled into your spine, back is long and flat. Shift your weight into your left leg, and we're going to step the right foot back about two-thirds of the way onto the mat, coming into Warrior One pose. In Warrior One, both of our hips are square to the front edge of the mat. Inhale, reach up. And as you exhale, bend a little deeper. Maybe you can walk in the left toes out a little further so we make sure that that left knee isn't going beyond the toes. Slowly release your hands down to the mat, framing that left foot. Come up on the right toes, coming into runner's lunge. Take an inhale here, and as you exhale, begin straightening the left leg, lowering the right heel, coming into pyramid. Adjusting your feet if you need to, and making sure that both of your feet are pointing up towards the top of the mat. So inhale to find length in your spine as you exhale. Draw your nose a little closer to your knee. Inhale to lengthen, exhale to deepen the stretch. Walk your hands forward to frame that left foot. Bring your left hand inside of the left foot, coming into lizard pose. You're welcome to stay here. There are a lot of variations of lizard you can do. You can stay right here. You can lower the right knee. You can come down on the forearms. You can stay on your hands. If you want to, you can even open your lizard. If you want to open your lizard, Flex that left foot, drawing the left toes up off the mat. Place your left hand on the left thigh and press it out, coming onto the outside edge of the left foot. You're welcome to stay here. You can draw that left hand behind your head. 
or you can reach the left arm back, bend to the right knee, and let the left hand find the right foot, coming into a quad stretch in your lizard pose. So lizard is a hip opener. And if you're holding your foot, you're getting a hip opener as well as a quad stretch. And if you're holding onto that foot, gently release it down. Close your lizard by bringing the left foot parallel to the long edge of the mat once again. On your forearms, go ahead and press onto your hands. Lift that uh, right knee up off the mat. And we're going to pivot the right foot so it's parallel to the short edge of the mat. Leave your left hand where it is, or you can bring it up to your thigh if you need to. Sweep the right arm up to the sky as we come into an extended side angle. If this is too difficult for you, you're welcome to bend that left elbow and place it on top of the left thigh. Think about opening your body here, stacking your shoulders on top of each other. Arms are in one long straight line. Your gaze can be up at the ceiling. Reaching up through those right fingertips, use the right fingertips to draw yourself up to warrior two pose. Making sure that both of our hips are square to the long edge of the mat making sure we're rotating our thighs outward, making sure that that left knee isn't collapsing and think about pressing it out towards the pinky toes. Torso is straight up and down, gaze is over the left fingertips. Inhale, reach everything up, straighten the left leg, and exhale, bend into warrior two. Inhale, reach everything up, Exhale, bend into warrior two. Inhale, reach everything up. Exhale, one more time, bending, getting as deep into that warrior two pose as we can. Bending the knee, sinking as low as we can, even walking the left toes out a little further if we need to, to make sure that our um, knee doesn't go beyond our toes. Then we're gonna cartwheel the hands down to frame that left front foot coming back into runner's lunge. Bend the right knee, step the right foot forward, coming into uh, forward fold. We're gonna heel toe the feet about the width of the mat. Take your peace fingers and wrap them around your big toes. Bend the knees a lot, lower the hips like you're coming into a yogi squat. And then slowly begin straightening the legs, keeping hold of, keeping yogi toe hold and using that to pull yourself deeper into this forward fold. Straightening the legs as much as you can. And then pull, use your hands to pull your upper body closer to those legs. Really pull yourself as deeply into the stretch as you can. And then release the hands, heel toe the feet all the way to the width of your mat. Drop the right hand underneath your nose. Bend the right knee, straighten the left leg, and reach the left arm up to the sky. Bend the left knee, left hand will come down to replace the right. Straighten the right leg and reach the right arm up to the sky. Bend both knees, lower your hips, raise your arms as you come into a wide-legged chair pose. Belly button is pulled into the spine, back is long and flat. Shift the weight onto the right leg and we'll step the left leg back, coming into warrior one pose. In this warrior one, we want to make sure that both of our hips are square to the front edge of the mat and that our knee isn't going past our toes. Taking a breath here, and then slowly as we exhale down, our hands are going to come to frame that right foot. 
So we're gonna come up on the toes of the left foot. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, straighten the right leg, lowering the left heel down towards the earth, coming into pyramid pose. Adjusting your feet if you need to, but making sure that they're both pointing up towards the top of your mat. Inhale to find length in your spine as you exhale, draw your nose a little closer to your knee. Inhale to lengthen your body, exhale to deepen the stretch. Slowly we're going to begin bending the right knee, shifting our weight forward, coming back into runner's lunge. Bring the right hand inside of the right foot, coming into lizard pose. You're welcome to stay here in your lizard pose. You can come down on your forearms. You can lower the left knee down towards the mat. And you can open your lizard. If you want to open your lizard, flex that right foot, drawing the toes up off the floor. Place your hand on that right thigh and open from the hip, coming to the outside edge of that right foot. Staying here, bringing the right hand behind your head. Or if it feels good to you, you're welcome to reach the right arm back. Bend the left knee, bringing the left foot into the right hand, taking that quad stretch as well. Slowly let the left toes fall to the ground if you have them. Bring the right hand inside the right foot. Close your lizard by bringing the right foot back down to the mat. Pop the left knee up off the ground and pivot the left foot so it's parallel to the short edge of the mat. Either staying here, lift your left arm up to the sky, coming into extended side angle, or bend the right elbow, placing it on the thigh for side angle. Whatever your body allows you to do. Um, think about pressing that right shoulder back so that your shoulders are stacked on top of each other and your arms are in one long straight line. Reaching up through the left fingertips, use that to pull your upper body up, coming into warrior two. Making sure we're rotating the thighs backward. Both of our hips are square to the long edge of the mat. That right knee is pressing out over the toes, gaze is over the right fingertips. Inhale, reach everything up, straighten the right leg. Exhale, bend into warrior two. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, bend into warrior two. Inhale, reach up one more time. This time as you exhale into warrior two, go as deep as you can into that warrior two. Bending the right knee as much as you can. Maybe even walking the right toes out a little further if you need to. Then we will cartwheel the hands down to frame that right foot. Step the left foot in, coming to forward fold. Inhale, hands on shins, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Plant the hands and either jump step or walk the feet back to plank. And either on your toes or on your knees, slowly lower yourself down to the earth for Chaturanga Dandasana, keeping the elbows pulled in. Take your back bend, whether it be baby cobra, king cobra, or up dog. Flip the toes, coming into downward facing dog. And we're going to lift that right leg up high to the sky for three-legged down dog. Bend the right knee and point it up towards the ceiling, stacking the hips here. You're welcome to stay here if you'd like a little bit more. Come to the outside edge of the left foot. Slowly land the right toes back behind you. Lift the hips. Open the chest, coming into wild. And wild thing, go ahead and land the right hand back down on the mat. Lift the left leg up high to the sky. Bend the left knee, bringing it over towards the left elbow and then lowering it down towards the left wrist. So 
slowly lower that leg down. And then we're going to land our right leg back behind us, coming into Pigeon Pose. Making sure that both of our hips are square to the short edge of the mat. Take a look back at your left foot and make sure it's not sickling in or out. If your hip is really high, you're welcome to put something underneath it, like a rolled up sweatshirt, a block, a pillow, whatever works for you if it's going to make you more comfortable. And then slowly, when you're ready, you're going to start walking your hands out and resting your upper body down over that right leg into pigeon.
toes under and we'll kick that left leg up high to the sky for three-legged down dog. Land the left foot next to the right. Looking up at the fingertips, either jump, step, or walk your feet to the top of the mat. Leaving your hips low, slowly lower them down to the ground. Um, extend your legs out long in front of you, flexing the feet. Inhale, reach the arms up to the sky, and as you exhale, fold forward over the legs. On your next inhale, draw the arms up to the sky, sitting up nice and tall, keeping those feet flexed. Pull your belly button into your spine. Draw your chin into your chest. Start scooping your um, belly in, and slowly lower yourself down to the mat, vertebrae by vertebrae all the way down. Taking an inhale when you land as you exhale. Drag the belly button into the spine, chin into chest, slowly rolling back up, sitting up nice and tall, and then folding over the legs. Inhale, sitting up nice and tall. Exhale, chin to chest, belly button into spine, slowly roll yourself down, vertebrae by vertebrae, all the way down to the mat. Inhaling, exhaling, chin to chest, uh, belly button into spine, rolling up vertebrae by vertebrae, sitting up nice and tall and folding over the legs. Inhale, sitting up nice and tall, exhale, chin to chest, belly button into spine, slowly roll yourself all the way down to the mat. Bring your fingertips behind your head. Um, Bend your knees, placing your feet bottoms down on the mat, and then slowly lift your legs up to shelf position so that your shins are parallel to the floor. Take an inhale as you exhale, extend the right leg, draw the right knee across the body towards the left elbow. Inhale back to center, exhale left elbow outside of right knee, back to center. You want to go slow so that you can really feel this and you want to be pulling the belly button into your spine. I also want you to make sure that you leave your bent leg at a 90 degree angle. Don't bring your knee in towards your elbow. Leave it out at that shelf pose. That's what's really going to make you feel this slow yogi bicycle. And just continue going from side to side. your chest, giving yourself a little hug. Bring your arms out to a T. Bring your knees back up to that shelf position. Glue that left shoulder down to the mat. Use your right hand to gently guide your legs over to the right. Making sure that that left shoulder is pinned to the ground. You're welcome to use your right hand to either help support your legs or to press them closer to the ground. Looking to the left if your neck allows it. Gently pull the knees back in towards the chest. Draw the right arm out to the side. Glue that right shoulder down on the mat and use the left hand to pull the leg or to guide the legs over to the left. Looking to the right if your neck allows it. your chest, give yourself a nice hug, and then extend your legs out to the opposite corners of the mat. Roll your shoulder blades underneath you. Close your eyes, come into Shavasana. I invite you to take a moment here.
to be thankful for everything your body did for you today. Take a moment to be thankful that you took this time out for yourself. If you set an intention, I invite you to come back to that now. If you dedicated your practice to someone, you're welcome to think about them as well. Thank you for sharing your practice with me. Namaste.